My sustainable art series is uh, rooted in a background, an educational background. I'm a product of the University of Nigeria and Soka. And we have that orientation about recycled waste. I started initially uh, with my traditional media and then I decided at some point that I was going to take it to the next level. I wanted to create this social and environmental awareness that uh, I believe that is very paramount, particularly in this modern and very industrialized society. I began with a workshop which I had at Abuja with a junk man uh, of Africa who is, uh, who is a renowned artist in that regard. And since then I've continued on my own series. I chose to work with uh, beverage cans. Beverage cans for me are like a metaphor for uh, the city, you know, for the definition of a city. The beverage cans are so meticulously produced that they have, um, they carry with them a message about not just the product, but about the environment in which they are produced. So I decided as someone who has a, a background as a colorist to uh, apply those, those graphic ideas of these uh, companies and to kind of measure to produce art that reflected the values, the energies and the hopes of the city. In doing this, I am also trying to educate the public, both the, the minor and the major public, about the value of recycled waste and the long-term positive effects on the environment. I have done a lot of research about environmental waste and the hazard that it has represented perhaps in the last five decades. And I know that Lagos, where I am actually having this exhibition, is also a major producer of waste as a industrialized city, largely populous. And it is important that Lagos becomes a forerunner in the propagation of a positive environmental attitude. I actually have different aspects of my work. One has to do with education. I have the part about industry. I have the part about the environment. Um, I also have the, the part about identity, which is uh, quite a raging debate today. The education deals with certain uh, experiences I've had. One is my childhood was practically spent in a library. So of recent, I reminded myself about an interview that I, uh, I saw on TV where uh, a major writer was being asked whether they had uh, libraries in Nigeria, actually bookstores actually. And it was a shock to me because um, in Osaka where I grew up, well, there were libraries in <laughs> most homes. You know, people had libraries in them. I grew up within the investment environment, so um, it was for me a bit bizarre that uh, that kind of question could be asked. Someone that had uh, the background was that was obviously uh, an educated one. So I began to work on this series that um, had libraries in them to begin to paint a positive picture. You know, because I noticed that there's a predominant um, obsession uh, by artists, figurative artists, with, um, uh, I would not say primordial, but um, the use of, uh, not even iconicity, but ancient uh, forms, you know, except figures. Yeah, there's always this thing about replicating relics of ancient civilizations, you know, some of which are actually living with us today. And uh, sometimes, of course, these, these are great ideas, but sometimes they tend to embed a kind of um, impression on the outer society that there is no civilization going on in some of these places. Or rather, there is no dynamism, that's the better word. So I decided that I should start implementing the other side of my society, which is Nigeria and uh, Africa on the larger space, and to start implementing a new kind of image around Africa which of course included industry, which included education, which included uh, sensitivity to even the environment as we are discussing globally now. So that was how the library came into my canvases. Of course, there is also a little bit of um, elucidation, you know, public elucidation about my own background. So some of the earlier library works had to do with a lot of books I had either read or encountered as a child or uh, as an actor, some of them which are in my collection now. I began this by starting with my own personal life and then began to extend it to the bigger question about what our values are um, uh, in Africa, which definitely includes education, uh, which includes civilization, which includes even uh, ideas in globalization. We are part of the global process and 
we are very much a participant in all the global discourses and it is important that the world understands this and when I mean the world I'm not talking about the uh, those who have access to travels and have access to media. I'm talking about the simple person in Asia, the, the peasant in somewhere in America and, and Europe. You know. We need people to have a better understanding of what the African society is uh, as a diverse uh, entity. I have a heritage, of course. I am from Midwestern Nigeria and a person from Midwestern Nigeria. And um, we have certain cultures and certain writing techniques that existed before uh, the colonial experiment happened. So in creating the book culture, I've also tried to uh, implement some of these uh, uh, motifs on my work. So you find that there are characters from some of these um, motifs that apply in my uh, books. Uh, they do not exist in reality, but they are, they are asking questions about what could have possibly been with Africa if colonization didn't happen. We believe we have had a mixture of uh, our own indigenous uh, arguments, our own indigenous brands um, with the global experiment, or would we have had uh, an entirely um, insular society? Today, I make bold to say that we have. Um, developed cynicism, particularly among the intellectual community, about um, what the African society should be. And I, I think that there is an extra emphasis on culture in a way that is sometimes um, devoid of dynamism. So I'm trying to create my own argument that argues that culture is both local and global, and that we can develop our culture in a way that becomes um, not just um, viable, but also um, easy to understand, easy to assimilate, and uh, very much compatible with ideas all around the world. So that is why I tend to apply some of those um, inscriptions. We have Uli and CBD, which are particular to the Eastern and the, uh, today we call it the Southern region, uh, the Igbo people and the Ibios. So I try to apply this to create a kind of new fantasy about a society that does not exist but that could have been. It's a way of asking questions and a way of asserting my own heritage into the global questions.